Today, we're going to be dismantling the seating system and redesigning it. Uh, this right here is a heat exchanger, <coughs> which allowed me to heat the heating system water with the hot water heater without having the waters mix. So, I wanted my fresh water going in and coming out, um, and my heating system to be separate. Well, I have a I have a hot water heater upstairs providing hot water now, and I don't want I want my tankless hot water heater to heat directly to my floors. So that's what I'm gonna do. And so it began, the dismantling of my heating system. So I built this in 2009, um, basically the first fall and winter that I was in the house. Um, what I just removed was the heat exchanger, which allowed me to run domestic hot water and heat for the house with one heat source, which was great for the time that it lasted, but I have a lot of scale in my water, and I was finding that the tanked hot water heater would keep the scale at the bottom and when I switched over to this hot water heater the scale would end up in all of my faucets and in my shower head and I was cleaning them once a week and personally I would much rather the scale just stay in the bottom of the hot water heater and I flush it out once a year. Um, I You can get a water softener but I just hate the way that water feels so anyway here I am reassembling the heating system um, basically skipping that heat exchanger and going directly into the uh, hot water heater from the bottom. Uh, trying to see. So here looks like, um, oh, I, I put a little drain valve on the bottom of this because this was my water, so then I use it as a fill. Uh, and here I'm just kind of putting the last pieces together. Oh, God, trying to get those PEX pipes to bend was nearly impossible. Ugh. One inch PEX doesn't move very well. So, just so you know. Okay, so, I'm done, which is awesome. Um, the change was, I took out everything here, which is all hot water based, and I hooked it up directly. So this is my supply, it's red, it goes right in here, pressure relief valve, fill, boiler drain, shut off, air vent, expansion tank, drain valve, Pressure gauge, mixing valve, temperature gauge, zones, drain, fill. So, this is the return side. I'm using it right now as a drain. I'm, I am had my hot and cold lines coming down. I decided to put in a boil drain so I could use it to fill the system and do my purge tasks with the hot water heater. Now, that's what I've, that's what I've got. Uh, I've got this line hooked up here. I'm going to fill... I've got this shut off closed. I'm going to fill here and I'm going to fill the garage. Um, which I'm ready to do now. I've just tested all this. The heat comes back on, heats the house. Da -da -da. No leaks. That's good. Um, so I think I'm ready to turn on the garage. Okay, now we'll turn on the water. Alright, so that's up to 25 PSI. There's going to be a ton of air in the line. But, uh, I do see some water there. This, I destroyed this shark bite fitting. Ah, it's hard to tell if that's residual water or what it is. But it appears to be holding 26 PSI. So I'm going to call it good. So I'm going to get out of the garage. I'm going to leave this open. I don't know how much this system can take. But man, look at that. I don't, I don't like that much pressure in the system. This thing's made for 25 here, so. Um. I wish I could turn my pressure down. 
I, could, I can't regulate it. Well, now it's holding 38 PSI, so, although I see two more drips. Well, might find more down at the garage, so let's see what we find down there. Okay, so let's try. So we've got like 45 PSI on that thing. Let's see how we're doing here. Supply. That's water from the roof. Okay, oh, I need to tighten those nuts too. Really tighten this very well. Ow. Okay, so you don't really need to see five more minutes of my mindless leak chasing. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm finding leaks and repairing them um, frantically and without much regard to where the camera is pointed. So um, anyway, this is the last video in the the last December 2011 kind of heating fiasco. Um, the pipe burst. It's unfortunate. Um, it's not the end of the world. I mean, this this stuff happens when you're working. You know, stuff breaks, stuff doesn't go the way you want. You move on. I moved on right after I built this. You know, yeah, it was a lot of work to build this, but I reused all the parts, and you know, no big deal. So, um, it was if anything, it was a good experience throwing this manifold together. Um, so, I think you know if you're pouring concrete put tubes in it and if you never use them fine it's it's really inexpensive and that was kind of my attitude from the beginning it's like i'm pouring these two slabs i'm gonna have pipes in them and if i never pump anything through them fine so the fact that i lost one meh, that's not the end of the world so um yeah this was the backstory to the last year's heating project so upcoming pellet boiler install